practical information for the audience before we start. The seminar is being recorded and the recording might be used for dissemination purposes afterwards. And please, if you have questions, comments, thoughts, feel free to share them in the chat. So welcome uh, everyone and good afternoon. My name is Marta and I'll be your host for today together with my colleague Eleonora in the, in the background. Uh, the focus uh, for today of this webinar organized by School Education Gateway is Digital Technologies for Climate Action in the Classroom. In this webinar, the participants are introduced to the potential of technology in mitigating climate change. Teachers are provided with an overview of digital tools and resources that they can use in the classrooms to unlock solutions to combat climate change. I am very happy to introduce our guest speaker today, Ariana Blazik. She's a teacher trainer, instructional designer, and a winning ambassador from Croatia. She's a recipient of the 2014-15 um, Hubert Humphrey Fellowship Award at the Penn State University. And she is a co-author of the Croatian National Curriculum for English Language Teaching and the Croatian National Curriculum for the Use of ICT as a cross-curricular topic. She is also an external expert at the European School Net, where she contributes to the EU Code Week. And last but not least, she serves on the advisory board for Driving K-12 Innovation and Steering Group for the Digital Education Hack, um, Hackathon and the EIT initiative under the European Commission's Digital Education Action Plan. Well, without further ado, I would like to give you the floor, Ariana. Thank you very much for being with us today. Thank You're you, Marta. Muted? Okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Marta. It's it's a huge, huge pleasure to be here with uh, you and uh, all our guests. And uh, I hope uh, they will like uh, my presentation and uh, then they will also um, be uh, happy to implement some of the suggested tools and uh, ideas in their classrooms. So uh, now I'm going to share my screen and uh, start uh, my uh, slides. Just a moment. And uh, while... Um, I'm starting the uh, presentation. I would also like to tell you that uh, the presentation will be shared with you later on. So don't worry about the links. You will be able to access all the links uh, after the, the webinar and it will be published on the website. So today I'm going to talk uh, about digital tools for climate action in the classroom. I'm going to mention some projects on climate action for students, uh, tell you more about my favorite topic, student voice and choice, and how it can be implemented uh, while teaching about climate change and climate action, and also a bit on coding, programming, and artificial intelligence for climate action. So there is plenty of us for do uh, to do during this uh, one hour webinar and at the end of the webinar you will have enough time to ask questions so uh, as Marta said feel free to post your questions in the in the chat but first let's start with an icebreaker I would like to hear your thoughts on the role of digital technology in fighting global issues and also on the use of digital tools for climate action in the classroom no matter what type of classroom we teach in, uh, be it physically distance, online or hybrid classroom. So what do you think? Here is a, a favorite tool of mine, WOCLAP, that uh, Marta and Eleonora will share in the chat and uh, you will soon be able to, uh, to scan the QR code as soon as I start the activity on WOCLAP. So it's here. Uh, you can see it now on your screen, I hope. Scan this code and or uh, follow this uh, uh, this link, booklab slash seg21. I can see that it's working. There are now uh, 16, 17, 18, 19 and so on of you already with me here. You can't answer the question yet. I will wait for 
uh, at least, let's say, 80% of you to join me in WorkLab. Uh, WorkLab is, by the way, a very nice tool. If you uh, haven't used it, uh, please uh, do so, because as you can see, it doesn't require any registration. So it's excellent for use in the classroom. And also, it's totally free for education. So if you sign up with your educator account, you will uh, be able to use all its features for free. So why not take advantage of it? So 57 of us in WOCLEP right now. I think I can start the first question and then you can also join me uh, later. So 60, I'm not sure. I think there are 70 of us in this uh, webinar right now, which is really, really an amazing number. So let's start with the first question. This is, uh, this first question is, uh, what global issues have you addressed in your classroom? So we, you, we are going to create a world cloud. Uh, what global issues have you addressed in your uh, world cloud? Okay, climate change, pollution, hunger, deforestation, uh, climate change now uh, the top. Uh, I'm sorry, Ariana. Yeah. Just sorry for interrupting you. As people are uh, replying to your first question, I would like to remind you, everybody, if you could please, uh, to the attendees, if you could please check that your camera is off because the, it appears to be a bug in the Teams app this afternoon and we can see you even though the camera should be off for everybody. So please, if you can be kind enough to check that your camera is off. Thank you. Okay, but my camera can be your, on. Your but... camera function, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. you're the only one that you would like to, to see, but okay. in this case we can see other people and they might not want to be seen. So I'm sorry, I it, up, it appears to be a bug, so if you can switch off your camera. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Eleonora. So please do switch off your cameras. And uh, please uh, take a look at my uh, uh, screen because it's really, really amazing. Uh, you have uh, 83 answers we have right now. So, but climate change uh, is the, uh, the, the one of the global issues that most of you have addressed in your uh, classroom. Let's go on with the next question, which is an open-ended question. Uh, how do you teach your students about climate change? So uh, here, I mean, do you uh, do you um, uh, use videos? Do you use TED talks? Do you use PBL? Yes, okay. So you teach about inequalities, but how do you do? Do you uh, uh, prepare your own activities? Do you prepare quizzes? Uh, do you ask your students to work on the topics they like? You experiment, deba debates, excellent. Yes, PBL, a lot of PBL, project work, uh, watching videos, you experiment, that's great. Podcasts, very interesting, eat winning projects. Uh, mm, that's amazing. So we have 48, 52 and counting numbers, but they are all different. Uh, this is really, really uh, impressive to see how many different uh, activities you use to uh, to teach your students about climate change. Uh, Socratic seminar, uh, very, very nice. Think, pair, share, reflections, oral presentations. Uh, you also use wakelet collections. So thank you. Uh, this, is, this is really uh, fantastic. Let's go on to the second question. Now my question is about digital tools. Which digital tools do you find most useful for teaching about climate? You will see we have three categories. One is in a physically distant classroom, so answer, you can answer this one. Then click on th this uh, um, uh, pop-up menu and then you will see online classroom and then hybrid classroom. So sub submit your answers. So we have Canva, uh, balloon debate, Socratic seminar, okay. You can you can write your tools, uh, the digital tools that you use. Yes, whiteboard tools for physically distance. That's excellent. And Canva is also very good. Yes, Wakelet, Nearpod and Kahoot for hybrid because we can include also students who are not in the classroom. 
for online classroom, you'll prefer videos. Maybe there are also some other tools like a Hoot, yes. A Miro, quizzes, different types of presentations. OK, H5P, excellent. I'm going also to mention it. Wakelet here. So there are uh, quite a lot of different uh, tools mentioned here. Geniali, Padlet, uh, Google Classroom. Uh, PowerPoint, YouTube, quizzes that I have, Teams, uh, Pep Talks, Assemble, EDU, okay, Scumpa, I have, I don't know this uh, tool, but it would be great to hear more about it, uh, and Adobe Spark, WordWall, so many of you, so we have 99 and uh, 100 answers here, thanks so much, you will also be able to uh, access uh, this uh, um, uh, the report uh, from Booklab so that you can also explore some of the ideas shared by uh, your uh, colleagues here in this webinar. And final question, which is a rating question. Please rate your agreement with the following statements, uh, with one being strongly disagree and with five being strongly agree. So the use of digital technologies is endangering our planet. Digital technologies offer new solutions for tackling climate change and protecting the environment. Artificial intelligence has lots of potential to combat, to help us combat climate change and climate change should be fully integrated uh, in every subject. So let's wait uh, for a moment. Uh, right now, uh, I think uh, most of you agree uh, that uh, uh, strongly agree that climate change should be fully integrated in every subject, not only science, uh, but all subjects, languages, arts, uh, social studies, uh, all physical education, so every subject. Okay, now let's uh, look at the first one. The use of digital technologies is endangering our pl planet. So. Uh, less than half uh, agree with this, so you actually, more of you uh, disagree with this, uh, uh, this statement. Uh, and uh, yes, so this, uh, there has been a lot of talk of how, um, of how much energy uh, our use of the internet uh, uh, is, uh, uh, has inc is increasing the uh, climate uh, uh, climate uh, action and change, but environmental problems, I mean, uh, but uh, in fact, uh, there have been some new studies that have shown uh, that it's not really true. Uh, then digital technologies that offer new solutions for tackling climate change and protecting the environment. Yes, that's uh, really uh, that what most of you think that uh, you agree with it. Uh, and indeed, there are uh, really a lot of uh, possibilities that uh, digital technologies offer us uh, to uh, combat uh, climate change. And artificial intelligence has lots of potential, so not so many of you agree with it, but uh, we'll see that there are also uh, a lot of potentials of uh, climate, uh, of artificial uh, intelligence to uh, help us combat not only climate change, but uh, uh, all uh, different uh, issues that we face today. Okay, thank you so much for uh, these answers. I will share the report with you later on. Uh, but now let's go on and let me start this uh, presentation with, uh, uh, with my uh, favorite project that I did with my students in uh, 2017. And I've seen that some of you who are now in this uh, webinar have also been um, engaged in one way or another in this project because it's really a fantastic project that uh, engages students uh, not only from uh, uh, your school but from different schools. Uh, in 2017, the project was in its second year and there were 250 schools from 64 countries that participated in it. It lasted for one uh, month in October, and I uh, in, involved my fourth graders, so they are high school students, they were high school students then, and we, did, uh, we, we dedicated the whole month of October to this project. We didn't do anything else but worked on climate action. 
uh, project and uh, we also um, uh, spent a lot of time outside the classroom, not only in the classroom. Uh, the students had uh, a lot of uh, opportunities to uh, choose the subjects they want, the topics they wanted to uh, do research on, and then to do some action in their local community. And their um, ideas uh, were then, then gathered in a sway. So we used sway for this, uh, uh, for this task. Uh, and uh, within the project, we also uh, uh, connected and collaborated with a lot of schools from different countries all over the world. And one of the uh, most uh, um, enthusiastic collaboration activities uh, for my students was uh, the uh, uh, connection with uh, uh, Classroom Canada. Uh, they first introduced themselves on a Padlet, but then we also had a live session where, where they talked about uh, uh, climate action uh, in their local communities in Croatia and in uh, Canada. And uh, it, it was uh, quite a difficult uh, a task to organize uh, considering the time zone and also the uh, technology, which we didn't have at that time. Uh, but we managed to complete uh, one live lesson uh, with Skype, so it was also great. Uh, as I mentioned, Climate Action is a project that continues. It, it has grown uh, immensely since, uh, since this uh, time that I joined in 2017. As you can see, uh, there are more than 2,700,000 students participating uh, from 146 countries. It lasts for uh, six powerful weeks, as they say, and it's uh, and I'm sure many of you have uh, uh, participated in it. Uh, it has just finished with a, a lot of uh, excellent activities for uh, all the participating uh, students uh, and not only students, but also uh, teachers. So if you haven't uh, joined, uh, please uh, check it out and uh, get ready for next year. Uh, and uh, then uh, the next activity that I would like to share with you is about global issues that I created on Blendspace. Uh, Blendspace is also a very nice tool that allows you to incorporate different types of uh, media. So it can be videos, it can be uh, text, PDFs, uh, uh, photos. Uh, and uh, so my students had to explore uh, a global issue of their choice and then write a composition uh, about it uh, and also prepare a blend space. So it was uh, the results were uh, really nice and they tackled the different uh, global issues, as you can see here, poverty, uh, earthquakes, global warming. And um, so I, I can say that uh, the takeaways from these two projects that I uh, did with my students some years ago uh, was uh, what uh, George Kouros, a Canadian educator, very nicely put as uh, that uh, the job of a teacher is simply to be the spark, help build confidence and then get out of the way. And I think this is what we as teachers need to uh, have in mind, need to do, that uh, we provide our students with decisions, not only uh, the, with the opportunity to make decisions, not only small decisions, but uh, substantial decisions, not only decisions about uh, what topic to uh, explore and what type of final product to create, but also about uh, uh, the whole learning process uh, because uh, students are all different, one size doesn't fit all. So it means that uh, we should allow them, uh, we should uh, help them uh, decide on their own learning pathway, their learning strategies, uh, the resources, materials they, are, uh, they will use for this uh, uh, project uh, at what uh, space, uh, the order of completion. But this doesn't mean that the teacher is not needed. I think quite to the contrary, and especially uh, uh, what we've seen during the pandemic when uh, 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 guidance by the teacher and support by the teacher is very, very much needed. 
and uh, also so the teacher is here to to make sure that uh, students have achieved uh, the learning outcomes so uh, i think that providing students with choice is uh, 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 very powerful for students at, and that it helps them take control of their learning uh, helps them uh, take uh, ownership of their learning and also this is how we help them uh, become um, entrepreneurs or help them uh, in enhance uh, and boost uh, and develop their uh, entrepreneurial skills. And uh, now I'm going to show you uh, how I do it with learning menus and choice boards. These are actually gra graphic organizers that uh, I like uh, using in my classroom. So this is a, a, a learning menu that I created on a template in Word. So it's a real restaurant menu, but I changed the food. Uh, I swapped the food with uh, some activities that uh, I prepared for my students. And uh, so it was uh, on uh, the topic of plastic challenge. Uh, in the first part, in the appetizer, as you can see, uh, there are three uh, activities. Uh, they are very short and they serve as a warm up for the project. And so it means that they need to do all of them. Uh, for example, the first one uh, was uh, an activity with H5P. Some of you already mentioned it before. Uh, so it's very uh, a good a tool uh, to create interactive uh, videos. Uh, which means that you can just stop the video and then uh, add different types of questions uh, in the video. The next one, uh, the next activity was uh, to read a text uh, by European Commission about single-use plastic. And for this, I use Rewordify. Rewordify is a tool that helps students who struggle with uh, their English language um, uh, it shows them uh, different, uh, uh, simpler words so that they can understand and not only simple words but also explanations uh, of these difficult words and uh, pronunciation as well. So it can be, um, these uh, Rewordify can be used on different levels and uh, uh, it, uh, uh, students also use it to learn uh, new words in English language. It's used only in for uh, text in English. And then the final activity that was obligatory was uh, to use a plastic calculator. So it was more like a fun activity that uh, they had to think about uh, uh, the items they uh, consume on a daily basis. Then the main course uh, also consisted of three activities, but they were asked to choose only one because these were more complex and they had to dedicate more time to each uh, of these that they, uh, of their choice. Uh, and finally, uh, the uh, dessert was uh, optional, so they didn't have to do it, but uh, as always, uh, a dessert is uh, irresistible, so th in the end, they they want to do these activities. Uh, for example, a meme generator, uh, a superhero maker, there are a lot of uh, tools that you can create your own superheroes, uh, or poster makers, this one with Canva. So this is kind of a wrap up that uh, they did uh, uh, in this uh, learning menu. Uh, instead of uh, these three activities, I also sometimes use formative assessment as dessert. So it's formative, so they are not graded. It's more for uh, it's more like fun and assessment and um, uh, that, but they still learn, so if they learn in a fun way. Uh, it uh, this one is a very simple uh, tool that doesn't require registration. Uh, it's called EduCandy, and you can practice vocabulary uh, with this tool in different ways. Uh, it I also did it uh, with online, so that uh, they uh, tell me the the letters, and then we try to uh, to figure out which word uh, is supposed to be in the exercise. And uh, but it can also be uh, played by them uh, as homework, for example. 
uh, or if you haven't tried it yet, uh, I uh, highly recommend Quizlet Live, which can also be played online, uh, but also in the classroom and students love it. So these, uh, these are uh, all activities, these, this quiz, uh, Quizlet Live and also EduCandy can be used to um, to revise uh, what you have learned, because of course we want our students uh, to to achieve the learning outcome, so we can check with these activities. Or if you haven't tried uh, Bluecat yet, give it a try. It's a kind of a, a, a quiz that is based on different games. Uh, so. Uh, Sometimes uh, students will also need to use different strategies because it's not only about accuracy, but it's also about speed. And there are also some power ups that they can add. Uh, uh, so it's uh, it's very similar to games they play on a, in their everyday life. Uh, but uh, you you can add questions about uh, uh, climate action, climate change, or any uh, global issue, and they will learn by playing. So there are only three that I mentioned here, but there are many more uh, fun uh, quiz, uh, quizzes that uh, I'm sure many of you use and you have uh, mentioned uh, before. And uh, now I come to choice boards. Here, uh, here is one that I created on environmental issues. So it means that uh, students have to choose one of these issues and then explore it. Uh, and uh, here are my ideas, but in the middle you can see there is a free choice. So if they don't like any of my ideas, they are free to choose their own. Uh, and after they are done, uh, they have to create a book report. Uh, here is another choice board, uh, but um, please notice that in the middle there is a square that says free choice. So again, if they are not happy with uh, what I think a report could look like, they can add their own idea. And uh, I think I have noticed that uh, they are much more creative when they have this, this opportunity. Uh, because I've also uh, been, uh, I've also asked them to, uh, to, I gave them a certain task that they needed to create and then I wouldn't, they wouldn't come up with so many creative ideas. So I, I, I think that if we provide them with different options and leave them also this free choice so that they can show us what they know, uh, then uh, we will get the results will be much, much better. Uh, and uh, uh, so and they know a lot. They uh, use uh, digital technology, for example, for games or for for different purposes. So why not connect their everyday life with uh, their school life and so that they implement what they are good at, what they are familiar with in their uh, real life? I mean, in their life outside school with uh, their life in school. So it's always, uh, I, I, I'm, I strongly believe in that. So in these uh, choice boards you have seen, they chose only one activity, but uh, these um, nine squares are actually a tic-tac-toe board. So uh, this, this is a choice board that I created for learning vocabulary with different uh, uh, learning strategies and they need to choose three uh, in a row, uh, horizontally, vertically, or diagonally, but then in the middle there is always this you decide, so maybe they have a better strategy how they learn uh, to, to uh, be better in games, for example, so why not uh, apply it here as well. Yeah, but uh, a choice board doesn't have to uh, have on nine squares, it can be as many uh, not squares, but whatever you want. Uh, so it can be uh, as many ideas or activities that you, you want to share with them. However, the, there is more to it. It's not only that uh, these, are, uh, uh, th these uh, choice boards have nice colors, uh, which I like, but uh, there is more to it. So it is, uh, I already mentioned that uh, students are different, they learn differently. And so these, this is a choice board uh, uh, based on different learning styles. So I don't have to tell them 
if you like drawing, uh, choose yellow because they will do it anyway without me. So, but I make sure that uh, it's it's personalized. And uh, this one uh, is uh, I did it in a different way. Uh, this this is uh, based on the level of uh, difficulty or complexity. So I can tell them uh, yellow is very easy and simple. But if you want to uh, dedicate more time to it, then choose the blue uh, squares and the activities in blue squares. Or uh, uh, this one uh, that I made uh, for a, a, a lesson about national parks uh, in the US and uh, UK. Uh, is based on Bloom's taxonomy with uh, 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 activities that start from lower order thinking skills and end up with the higher order thinking skills. So it's uh, they can do all of this in this uh, uh, in the first and the second row or only one in the first or second row. And speaking of Bloom, this one is about endangered species. Uh, they have to start uh, uh, in the yellow circle, which is, this is obligatory, but the blue petals are not obligatory. So they can choose, for example, if they prefer watching about endangered animals or plants, or they would prefer reading about it. And then in the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, green leaves, uh, are two tasks that they need to do. So it's also uh, they are given a choice. Uh, and uh, but and that, then I, I can offer them different um, ideas on how they are going to present their learning, how they are going to demonstrate what they know. And there are so many, many different things that they can uh, use. So why limit them to, to only some? Uh, for example, you it, the, most uh, often it's and I do it sometimes. I tell them create a presentation or write an essay. But if we give them this opportunity to choose from many different things, then the results will be uh, much better. How to make choice boards? If you uh, ask. Uh, yourself how to do it. I started with a simple Microsoft Word and then created a table and add colors to it. Then I discovered uh, uh, Google Slides, which I uh, use now more frequently because uh, it's very, very easy to duplicate and then I just uh, change the content or uh, whatever I want. So uh, it's uh, uh, Google Slides and then there is uh, uh, Geniali that has a, a, a ready-made choice board and also Slides Mania. Uh, they have many different types of choice boards and they are all uh, free uh, that you can use uh, to make your choice boards. And now just a moment, I skipped one slide. I also wanted to say that uh, I use Google Slides uh, in combination with Bitmoji avatars. So Bitmoji classrooms are very popular and have been very popular during, especially uh, during the lockdown. And uh, so you add your avatar uh, to, the, uh, to this uh, lesson, for example, this one about environment, and then students can choose uh, 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 behind these links that you can see here are video lessons that they can they can then uh, watch the lesson, they can read uh, uh, the uh, different articles and then do some tasks. Uh, also, I uh, strongly believe that uh, uh, teaching climate change uh, can can be done uh, very nicely as a storytelling storytelling activity. And here is one activity that I did with story cubes. So I created these story cubes uh, in Google Drawings and Storyboard that they can be printed out, but we are all in, uh, environmentally uh, conscious. So we actually do it online uh, and especially uh, in uh, hybrid or online classes. So what uh, my students do is they create in teams, they create uh, these uh, story cubes. Um, uh, yes, if printed out, you will get a cube, of course, but if online you won't. Uh, so they put different photos, they put uh, emojis, um, icons, and then 
uh, they swap uh, uh, the their uh, story cube and uh, they need to write a story uh, based on another team's uh, uh, story cube. And uh, after they are done, uh, they compare uh, their uh, story with uh, what the, the team originally uh, thought this story would be about. And there are often uh, quite a lot of differences between uh, how they imagined uh, what would happen with these uh, uh, images and uh, what uh, the, the the story was uh, about in the end. Okay, and now uh, I would like to share with you a very nice uh, resource, Say It With Science, by United Nations Foundation. Uh, I think it is also important that we uh, uh, combat climate disinformation, especially at these times, uh, and uh, that we promote scientific solutions to climate change. So on this page, you will find uh, ready-made infographics and visuals uh, that you can uh, use with your students, but also you can ask your students to create and then post uh, to, to, to this foundation the, the, their infographics, the infographics they create, visuals, the photos, paintings, drawings, or poems, or anything else, uh, on different topics. And you will find uh, a lot of information, uh, scientific information about uh, uh, all these topics that you can see here, energy, global warming, biodiversity, and so on. So it's really uh, a very, uh, uh, user-friendly site and student-friendly site, so even younger students uh, can use it and create their own uh, uh, activities that would combat climate disinformation. Uh, now I would like to share with you uh, uh, my favorite website, which is EU Code Week, um, uh, which has a lot of, of uh, different uh, resources for uh, teaching coding in the classroom for all subjects, but it also has uh, these uh, learning bits. These learning bits are uh, lesson plans uh, for students of all ages, uh, and these lesson plans are step-by-step -step guides that you can just take from the internet and then implement in your classroom. And uh, we have uh, like 15 learning bits, and one of them is dedicated to sustainable development goals. So here is uh, just a brief overview of uh, uh, coding for sustainable development goals. Uh, for example, for the first um, picture that you can see on the left, uh, is um, an activity or a lesson plan for um, primary school students uh, and it relates to uh, the goal uh, number 13. Then the, the, the one in, in the middle is um, can be used with students in uh, 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 primary, lower and upper secondary school uh, about healthy life, uh, goal 3. And finally, for secondary school students, uh, empowering girls and women and uh, achieving gender equality related to goal five. So uh, these are very, very nice activities. So if you uh, would like to uh, give coding a try, uh, I encourage you to do so and uh, uh, try it out. I'm sure you and your students will like it. Uh, and uh, speaking of coding and programming, of course, uh, we, uh, I would also like to mention uh, how important it is uh, that uh, artificial intelligence is used for good uh, to, for Earth, as they say, uh, so that uh, uh, there are really uh, great potentials of artificial intelligence that can be used to uh, for example, give people more accurate climate predictions, uh, then uh, to help uh, people monitor uh, the health of farms, uh, to protect biodiversity, uh, and also to monitor uh, water supply. So there are already a lot of different initiatives uh, funded by uh, uh, big companies. 
uh, that uh, uh, you can read about and uh, also in, you can take part in some of them. And now let me show you how I took part in uh, AI for Earth Hackathon. Uh, it was organized by Microsoft uh, last year, in, in November last year, for students uh, aged 13 to 18. It was uh, uh, Imagine Cup Junior. And uh, the learning outcomes were uh, to learn about AI and then to create as a team an AI for good concept that could make a positive impact on the world around them. And uh, the end goal was uh, to design and pitch in front of all the, 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 the audience, all the other participants, to pitch an AI-based AI web service that protects an endangered species. So this is how we work. Uh, here you can see um, there were uh, students from, from seven countries, five students in a team, and uh, we were all uh, given uh, the, uh, all the teams were named after famous scientists. So, for example, Ada Lovelace, uh, Ellen Turning, Grace Hopper, and then they worked together for two days uh, over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. And uh, so they learned about AI, they learned about classifications, they learned about algorithms and how AI can be used uh, to combat uh, climate change. And then they had to implement uh, their knowledge, their learning uh, in, in a project. So, of course, these were um, uh, these, the, the projects were not developed, uh, fully developed during these uh, uh, two days, but it was uh, 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 more like an introduction to what could be done uh, in their local environment to help protect uh, an endangered species. Uh, so it was it was really a great event, and uh, I hope uh, more events like this will happen uh, for students because uh, it uh, really empowers them uh, uh, when they take tackle some authentic problems and um, uh, the, the teachers who, who taught them how to do it were uh, scientists who, um, who work with artificial intelligence on a daily basis. And uh, uh, so it was, it was really uh, uh, an amazing experience, not only for my students, but also for me as a teacher. Uh, and then I would also like to share with you uh, this uh, excellent uh, activity and also a full lesson plan that you can implement in your classroom uh, by uh, code.org. Uh, it is uh, called AI for Oceans. Uh, as you can see on top, there, there is number four and then these uh, symbols, uh, green and white symbols, which means that uh, uh, these are... Uh, um, uh, steps or these are activities in a lesson uh, that you and your students need to take and so some are videos, some are um, explanations uh, and uh, while doing this you learn about machine learning and how machine learning and how artificial intelligence classifies uh, different objects and at the same time you learn uh, uh, how to protect uh, our oceans. So if you haven't done it yet, please do so. It's really, really an, uh, a very um, uh, useful uh, activity and also very simple. So uh, I'm sure you, you and your students will love it. And now uh, I would like to share with you uh, this great project uh, on experiments with Google. So experiments with Google are uh, different projects submitted by people from all over the world, uh, not necessarily scientists or computer uh, programmers, but uh, whoever wants to experiment with, uh, uh, with uh, AI or augmented reality as well. Uh, they are all welcome to submit their project, so your students might also give it a try. 
so this experiment is uh, about uh, the, it's called the heartbeat of the earth. It is a series of online artworks interpreting climate data. So you can see here that uh, you can learn more about pollution, uh, more about uh, 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 climate change, uh, oceans, uh, also uh, food. Uh, so there are different topics. And let me show you one. Uh, this one is uh, called Climate Change Impact Filter. Uh, this is an interactive machine learning experiment that visualizes what we might lose and what will remain as temperature rises. So, for example, when you, uh, you, you can see here on top that you have different uh, species, uh, insects, birds, reptiles, and so on. So when you click one of these um, uh, species and then uh, move the, uh, the slider on the right, on the right hand side there is a slider, you, you uh, change, uh, you actually uh, uh, make temperature rise uh, or fall. Uh, so here, for example, what would happen uh, if uh, temperatures rise by 3.9? Uh, degree Celsius, uh, what would happen with sea lions? And you can see how many, 63 of them will disappear. So it's an excellent uh, exercise for students uh, and to make them aware uh, what, that uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is real and it is, uh, it is very important that we tackle this problem. Uh, on the right hand side, you can see uh, what will happen if uh, uh, temperatures rise by 1.3 degrees uh, for carpenter bees species. And not only that, for some of the species, you, you also have a prediction uh, uh, what the world would look like if this species is gone, is extinct. So here, for example, in this uh, picture at the bottom, you can see a city without birds, the, uh, certain type of birds. So what it would look like if, 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 if this happened. Uh, there are, uh, as you can see, uh, there are a lot of different species, a lot of different uh, um, tasks that students can do. And then uh, you can, uh, 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 and you can uh, develop a, a lesson plan based on that. And uh, here we can see how uh, artificial intelligence can help us. And finally, I would like to uh, finish this talk with uh, 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 Google search uh, augmented reality uh, on mobile phones. So this is actually, it is, it is not really an app, but it can be used only on mobile phones, not on, uh, it's not web based. So you will see when you, for example, uh, Google sea turtle, you will see uh, this meet a life-sized green sea turtle up close and then view in 3D, and then you will be able to move it and, uh, and explore it and do whatever you, uh, uh, or maybe you, you would, uh, for example, for language um, teachers, it would be, um, uh, uh, an exercise in uh, writing, so describing uh, certain species. So it would be, uh, I think it, it's a very nice activity. Uh, there are uh, different, um, uh, there are different endangered animals uh, like these that you can see here, but not only endangered animals, uh, there are a lot of different animals that uh, you will be able to, uh, to see in a, a life-sized version in augmented reality, and not only animals, but also um, different uh, concepts that students study in biology, um, in uh, chemistry. So give it a try, just uh, go to Google search and you will see if you have this uh, 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 view in 3D. Uh, you will uh, be able to to use it in this way, but uh, uh, it can be only done on mobile phone. Uh, and so this brings me to the end of uh, the webinar. Uh, 
And uh, if you have questions, I would be happy to answer uh, answer them. So now I'm going to uh, stop sharing my screen because I haven't uh, been able to see the questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ariana. Before we move on to the question, um, I would like to remind the participants that there is a feedback form. My colleague Elena will post it in the chat, so uh, just for you to save the link and uh, fill it in after the webinar, of course. Uh, so, Ariana, we, we had a lot of positive comments uh, in the chat while you were talking, so uh, this is great. I'm going just to read uh, a few of them. Um, um, we had one um, participant who said that everything was really interesting and he pointed out that indeed the outside the classrooms uh, it's uh, are one of the best way to let students uh, to there uh, with this issue and find solution so i don't know if you want to maybe elaborate a, a bit more on this point uh, it's I'm not so a real question but but uh, i'm sorry i didn't hear you i don't uh, know maybe it well, was I about the outsider classroom uh -huh, outside of, yes, I think uh, this is a great opportunity to take students outside, uh, especially uh, during the pandemic when we were uh, actually asked uh, by the head teacher to go outside so that we don't spend so much time in the in the classroom. Uh, and uh, now uh, you reminded me of a great activity that uh, can be done with students is geocaching so that you search for different objects in the uh, uh, in the schoolyard, for example, uh, and uh, uh, explore. Uh, in my school, we have a very nice uh, park uh, around the school, so explore different species and and also talk, talk about it, but in a different setting. Yeah, thank you. Uh, for elaborating this further and actually one of the questions we had in the chat was about the GDPR and while you're using all the tools that you present presented uh, how how do you deal with issues of GDPR uh, well, it's uh, um, I always read the small uh, print of course uh, and uh, I, uh, all the tools that you have seen uh, require no registration, so uh, students will not register for them uh, and they will not give their names. However, their IP addresses, you know, and uh, their digital footprint, of course, but uh, so uh, I try to make sure to, to use uh, uh, tools that uh, do not store uh, their data uh, uh, or the, that do not store their data in the uh, uh, in ad, on other continents, so to say, but that they are here in Europe. So sometimes mm -hmm. it's really really difficult. But uh, uh, and uh, I try uh, I try not to uh, not to uh, uh, I I always. Uh, make sure that my students' data is uh, protected. Yeah, indeed, it's not uh, always easy to deal with this uh, this issue, but yeah, um, as the best approach, uh, I think, is what you just explained. An important thing is that the data are at least um, collected within the European Union and not in the external countries. So, um, we don't have questions at the moment, not more questions in the chat, but um, people are continuing to post uh, a lot of thanks and a lot of uh, positive uh, comments. So before we close, uh, thank you, of course, for your participation. And uh, I would like to remind you that no certificates are issued, issued for this session, but the session uh, has been recorded. So actually, you will find all the material available, included the slides from Ariana. So you will be able to access all the presentation, the recording afterwards, and uh, uh, to use it also, I don't know, maybe with your students or uh, for your... Okay, 
and uh, the links and also the links i will put all the links in the yeah. uh, on the slides so uh, in a pdf you will be able to uh, to just click the the link and it will lead you to the to these tools exactly okay so uh before we close i would like to leave you maybe ariana one more minute to to say something to close the session because actually the presentation was was yours so uh, i would like to leave you the floor one last time uh, uh, to, to close this webinar and thank, thank you. you very much uh, for uh, being with us today it was really really inspiring and i'm sure really useful for our audience Thank you, Marta. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation and many thanks to the participants of the webinar for their active participation in the in the ice breaking activity. And uh, also, uh, I hope that uh, you will manage to implement uh, some of the, the activities that I mentioned uh, or tools. Uh, I know there are many. So uh, choose those that you think uh, would work best in your classroom with your students. You know your students best. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ariane, and thank you very much to all the participants who joined us today. Uh, we were quite many, actually, um, around 130, something like that. So oh, it was really, amazing. really great. 150, actually. So. <laughs> The participation was really, really good. So thank you very much, everyone. I wish you all a, a good evening and a good weekend. And stay safe. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you, and bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.